Hey everyone, this is Samir and you are watching Nation Innovation. Today we are going to talk about FPGA programming. Now, what this is FPGA programming? Why is it so special? Why we are discussing it? All, all of these topics will be covered in today's video. So let's move on. First, let's have a look at the differences between the most common, uh, common thing used by the electronics people called microcontroller and the FPGA. So these are the few uh, differences that we can see. First of all, FPGA is hardware configuration. It means whatever we the program that we are writing, it configures the hardware of the uh, FPGA. FPGA doesn't know what it, it is. Uh, FPGA is totally blank hardware. We have to configure the hardware the, to behave it in certain way. That's why it is called hardware configuration. Whereas microcontroller like Arduino or 8051 or uh, ARM, both all of them have a predefined hardware the only thing that we have to do is configure the software it means we have to program it you have to pro uh, tell it, tell it what it has to do it knows how to do but we have to tell him what to do all right second thing is fpgas are configured uh, whereas micro microcontrollers are programmed as i explained right now the third thing is we can compare FPGA with respect to microcontroller as a newborn child and an employee. Like a newborn child, it, a newborn child doesn't know what, what it is, what, what it has to do, everything we have to tell it. Whereas an employee, an employee of a company knows how to do any task, but the company has to tell the employee that what it has to do. Uh, yeah, what it has to do. So the uh, in the similar way, a microcontroller knows how to do any task, but what to do it doesn't know. We, the programmer has to tell the microcontroller what to do. Whereas in FPGA, FPGA uh, is a, is a totally blank hardware, so it it itself doesn't know uh, what to do, whereas how to do. So we have to tell it first. Of first, we have to tell it uh, how to do and uh, how to do any task. And secondly, we have to tell it what, what task to perform. Last difference is in FPGA, we have to define the hardware. The hardware the programmer has to define. Whereas in microcontroller, soft, hardware is predefined, pre whereas software the programmer has to define. It means well, in FP, uh, while programming FPGA, whatever we are writing in the uh, editor, it, re it uh, resembles the hardware of the uh, hardware of the FPGA, whereas in uh, uh, whereas in microcontroller, the hardware is predefined. That this is this is only the main difference. In FPGA, the hardware is not defined. We have to define the hardware. Whereas in uh, microcontroller, hardware is predefined. We just have to define the software. This is the basic difference between FPGA and C, uh, FPGA and microcontroller. Now let's have a look at some of the components required for programming our FPGA. So these are the components required. First of all is the FPGA development book. In order to, uh, in order to program any sort of device, first of all we need a development board or uh, uh, an emulator. So uh, in FPGA we have, a, we have various sorts of FPGA development boards. Earlier F the FPGA development boards used to be very expensive but these days uh, as the days keep on going the costs are continuously reducing. For example I recently bought an FPGA board for just 1200 bucks. Second is a programmer. In the, for example, in Arduino, Arduino has an inbuilt programmer in, in, in itself, but FPGA is a blank hardware, so it doesn't have any uh, any programmer or any sort of thing built in, inside itself. There are some boards, some expensive boards available in the market, which have uh, programmers inside inside the board itself. They are usually called USB blaster programmer, but uh, in uh, the cheaper versions of the boards, we have to use an external programmer. It comes for around um, uh, 200 to 300 rupees. And uh, I, I recently bought one of them. Uh, as I'm using Cyclone Family FPGA, which is uh, driven by uh, Altera. Uh, so I have to use uh, this USB blaster programmer. Then the third thing that we have to use is a 5 volt power supply. Now, most of the FPGAs, in, on contrary to the uh, microcontrollers, most of the microcontrollers uh, these days use uh, 5 volt power supply. Uh, the, all the GPIOs use 5 volt are 5 volt uh, compatible, but the FPGAs are 3 volt compatible. 
So in order to interface them with uh, another hardware, we have to use a 5 volt power supply. So these are the three components that, that we will require. Now let's have a look at the components itself. So these are the components required to program the FPGA. In the center, there is a Cyclone 2 family FPGA development board. You can see it is a really simple board with just headers. Uh, let's have a closer look at the board. This center is the FPGA, uh, the main FPGA. There are two headers. This this header uh, is for uh, uh, JTAG interface, and this one is for Active Serial interface. As we saw, FPGA uh, don't FPGA are, are uh, totally uh, hardware based. It means it doesn't know what to do. Uh, the hardware the programmer has to configure. So F, uh, uh, these two interfaces are required: the JTAG interface and the AI, Active Serial interface are required to program the FPGA. The JTAG interface just pro programs the uh, hardware inside the FPGA. FPGAs are quite volatile in nature. It means uh, once I pro if I program it and I remove the uh, power supply, the FPGA will again forget wh what it is. So next time when I uh, uh, plug in the power supply, the program will be erased. For that purpose, you can see at the back of the board, here, this IC, this one, is the uh, is the uh, is the ROM memory, the EEPROM memory. The, this EEPROM memory stores the program inside, program of the FPGA that the configuration of the FPGA. And the active serial mode doesn't program the FPGA itself, but it programs the uh, EEPROM memory. So next time, uh, so whenever we program the EEPROM memory and and we remove the power supply, next time whenever power of power supply is given. The EEPROM memory will uh, program the FPGA, uh, will configure the FPGA with the data stored in itself. So our data won't be erased. So the, a good practice to program FPGA is that uh, till your uh, configuration is not finalized, you just program the FPGA itself using the JDAT interface. Once your uh, program is finalized, you can go to the uh, active serial interface and program uh, and, uh, and upload the program in the EEPROM memory. Another thing you can observe here is the at the center. This one is the crystal, the uh, the oscillator. Now here the oscillator is of 50 megahertz. This is the USB blaster programmer that I was talking about. The USB blaster programmer is used to program uh, upload the program for, from our PC to the FPGA. This is a this is the USB cable for the for uploading the program, and this is the uh, 5 volt power supply so now let's move on to the uh, software and uh, software environment required to program the FPGA before moving on to the software environment we have to see a few details regarding the board that we are using so uh, this the link of this uh, the link of this site will be provided in the description so uh, here you can see this is the board that we are using here uh, this is the, the at the lower side you can see the 5 volt uh, power input these two JTAG headers and the active serial headers and these uh, on the all four sides of the FPGA you can see the GPIOs. One thing we have to see here that these three are the LEDs and this is a push button which is attached to the FPGA. FPGA doesn't have any reset facility inside itself. So if you want to reset it, you have to uh, remove the power supply and again, uh, again connect it back. Let's uh, let's see to what pin numbers these three LEDs are connected because as we are uh, dealing with the LED blinking program and we are blinking the onboard LEDs, so uh, we have to see to which pins these LEDs are connected. These are uh, written at the uh, here. You can see some features of the board like the EP2C5 is the uh, family of the uh, FPGA that that is uh, connected in this board. Here, 5 volt DC sub power supply is used. The, these are the three LEDs are there on the board and one button is also there. A 50 megahertz crystal is, uh, a clock crystal is also connected. Uh, the, here you can see this is the JTAG interface and this is the active serial interface. Now here you can see at the pin number 3, the 7 and 9, these LEDs are connected. And at pin number 144, this push button is connected. And at pin number 17, the 50 megahertz clock input is connected. So now, uh, these these are the details that we will be needing the uh, in this project.
the details of the, this uh, this link will be provided in the description itself so you can have a look at uh, all the details if you desire from here this is the software environment that we will be using uh, this is called Quartus uh, it is provided by Altera as we are using the Altera based FPGA further if you are using Xilinx based FPGAs you have to use their software which is called one software is called Xilinx Vivado and the other one is called Xilinx ISE here this program is almost similar to the C program that we, were, we are used to write in here you can see this module the main function is replaced by this module uh, module keyword and end module also is there in C language we, are, we were using the uh, curly braces instead of curly braces here we are using begin and end statement so here uh, the this this program is for the uh, blending the LEDs one thing we have to keep in mind that the uh, name of the main module the module the main module inside any program should be same as the uh, name of the uh, this uh, project itself so here you can see the name of the project is hello at the same time the name of the module is also hello otherwise this uh, the compiler will show an error inside the brackets after the after naming the module inside the brackets you have to specify all the inputs and outputs here we are using as we are we have to blend the three leds we are using three output pins and one clock input so then we have we declared the input and outputs here as another register we are declaring which is a counter a counter we have to use in order to uh, we are converting the clock input into a uh, the we are basically reducing the frequency of the clock we are reducing the frequency of the clock so that we can see the uh, blinking of the leds initially we uh, set the counter to zero and all the leds uh, at the on position this is written inside the initial block inside the always block the always block is like a forever loop here you can see we are incrementing the counter when the counter goes to here when the counter goes to the maximum value we are changing the counter to zero at the same time we are uh, uh, changing the state of the leds from on to off or off to on so this was the basic program that we are going to upload on the fpga first let's uh, let's go to the um, pin assignment we have we have to uh, in the pin planner here the pin planner is opening here we can see i have uh, configured the clock input to the pin 17 where the uh, 50 megahertz slot is connected out one out two and out three these are these i have connected to pin number three seven and nine where the leds are connected you can manually change it for example if, if i want to change it to some other pin like pin number 10 so it is pin number 100 suppose so just a minute so so now it is pin number 100 you can also uh, uh, change it to any any sort of pin but let's for now let's keep it pin number 9 because we have to uh, blink the leds so th this we have to do before compiling so let's compile it it will take some time yeah the compilation has started here you can see all the messages and here the uh, percentage of compilation that has been completed at the le left hand side so here you, you can see 50 percent compilation has completed so let's wait for some time here yeah now you can see 75 percent is completed so uh, it's almost done yeah here full it is showing the full compilation is was successful but eight warnings are there you, you just have to ignore the warnings any if any error is there then that is a uh, that is an issue but if uh, warning is there there, there that's not an issue some details i want to discuss here you can see the total logic elements it is given 46 uh, 56 out of 4608 4608 is the maximum possible uh, number of logic elements that we can utilize and out of that only 56 were utilized in this uh, in this project further there are these uh, memory bits memory bits uh, is i don't i don't want to discuss right now 
the embedded multiplier that is used if you are using uh, if you are implementing some digital signal processing the, then this embedded multipliers will be used so uh, here we have compiled the uh, the uh, the code now let's upload it to the board the to our fpga board so for that we have to go to the programmer first i will be using the jtag interface so for that we have to change it to the jtag interface here you can see mode is syllab is already selected as active serial programming because last time i uploaded on the active serial mode so let's convert it to the jtag mode yes and we have to add the file For adding the file, go to the output files folder and select the .sof file. .sof file you have to select if you are using the JTAG interface and .pof file you have to select if you are using the active serial interface. So for uh, JTAG interface, let's select the SOF file. You can see that the device has by default been selected here. This is the checksum of our code. This is the user code and everything. And now we have to select the hardware. Hardware, as I said, it is USB blaster. So this USB blaster we have to select from here. So now it has been displayed here, USB blaster. And let's uh, uh, program slash configure and let's verify it also. So it is not, okay. Uh, in this version of the quarter, this verify option is not available for the JTAG interface, okay. So let's uh, start the programmer. So here on the right hand side you can see the programmer is successful, 100% uh, successful and now the FPGA has been programmed. It is like right now it is blinking, you cannot see see it but right now I've, I saw it, it is blinking. I, I will be showing it to you in, in a few moments. I have, uh, see here now I have uh, configured the FPGA in the JTAG interface but in order to um, make it permanently programmed we have to use active serial interface also. So let's program it in the active serial mode add file now, as I said dot pof file is necessary let's program it slash configure it now I have to connect disconnect uh, disconnect the FPGA uh, disconnect the programmer from the JTAG, uh, JTAG uh, header to the active serial header so let's do that let's program and configure it and yeah all, all rest everything has been by default selected Let's program it. It will take some more time. Yeah. So now it is 100% successful. So let's right now uh, have a look at the output of, of, of the project. What all uh, is the whether the LEDs are blinking or not. Let's have a look at that. So now as you can see that the uh, LEDs are blinking and I have uh, uploaded the program on the FPGA. This program, I, not only I have uploaded on the FPGA, but also I have written inside the EEPROM memory that I was talking about. So next time, whenever I will remove the power supply, the pro program will stay inside the uh, EEPROM memory and the EEPROM memory will configure the FPGA. Let's have a demo of that. So now I am removing the, uh, the 5 volt power supply. So the power supply is removed and you can see the LEDs have sw uh, switched off and everything inside the uh, FPGA has been erased. Now let's uh, uh, turn uh, the 5 volt power supply back. So here you can see the LEDs are still blinking. It means the program has been stored inside the EEPROM memory plus uh, the EEPROM memory has now configured the FPGA to uh, blink these LEDs. So in this video we saw how to program an FPGA, what are the differences between microcontrollers and FPGA and all such details. If you like this video please so don't, don't, don't forget to subscribe our channel, like this video and we'll meet in the next video. Till then goodbye.